Hello everyone, it's Richard here. In this video today, we're going to be looking at protoplant, protopasta. And specifically for this first video, I'm going to be looking at their magnetic iron PLA. So first things first, yes, they did send me the t-shirt and the sticker and the coffee mug and some samples to experiment with. That was over five months ago, so I haven't actually uh, done this particularly quickly. And I don't make any apologies for that because I wanted to really review the filament, test it with lots of different things and go through all of the different settings you might want to try with their types of filaments. So in this series, this is going to be a series on protopasta. So first of all, we are looking at the magnetic iron PLA. So let's get on with that and then I'll introduce at the end some of the other videos that I'll be looking at later on. So first of all, another really big thank you to Hawk 3D Proto who managed to send me some more protopasta when I ran out because I got halfway through a print and ran out so that was really great and since then I have actually bought quite a lot of protopasta because it's really nice material but again we'll go into that in a little bit more depth first of all let's uh, talk a little bit about the material itself so the guys at, uh, at protopasta produce a number of uh, filled materials and this magnetic iron PLA allows you to produce parts um, with a filled element of iron particles that can then actually be rusted and that's really what you're going to do with this filament so you can't do a great deal else with it, it doesn't polish up particularly well but it does rust fantastically well and it's a lot of fun I can tell you this is probably one of the most fun materials you can 3D print with and then post process very easily because you don't have to actually do a lot, rusting happens using the right chemicals and we'll go on to that in a minute. So I've tested both 2.85 millimeter and 1.75 on a reel they, they do them in different sizes you get a 125 gram sample pack and they do reels of 500 grams and they also do a big two kilogram reel which is quite large it's a good 12 inches or so um, the easy ones to use are the 500 gram reels and I've tested it in both sizes you get about 48 meters on the 2.85 and you get about 128 129 meters on the 1.75 it doesn't sound like a lot and it really actually isn't so the things I'm going to show you that I've printed are with two reels so one kilograms worth of protopasta magnetic iron PLA and I used every little bit it didn't waste any um, and I managed to get every little bit out of it this is the last bit I've got left so that's it so the first thing you want to do when you're testing any new material or even materials you've already got is print some test pieces so you don't waste material on objects you want to print but they go wrong so first thing I always do is print a little dog tag and I print this at 100% infill so this is a really good test it's a very simple test because it's quite quick to print uh, but it actually has a lot of the elements you need to check it, you can check that you've got your flow settings correct because you've got your bottom setting first setting that's the first first layer that's going to go on to your build plate and then you've got all the infill and then you've got the top fill you've also got an extruder retraction settings because it has to move to the hole in the dog tag and that's a really good thing to do so my very first test was fine on that so I didn't really have much to tweak other than the fact I was testing this on a number of different machines so I did all of the 2.85 millimeter prints on the BCN 3D Sigma and I did all of the 1.75s on a range of RepRap printers so a Purusha i3 and some of my own 3D printers to print some larger things which I'll show you in a sec so after that you've got a nice setting I only had to change the flow rate ever so slightly and that was because of the two different machines the BCN 3D Sigma is a Bowden based that's the the 2.85 millimeter and I needed to increase the flow rate ever so slightly with that one with my direct feed 1.75 I actually needed to decrease by a few percent the flow rate temperatures were pretty much spot on the same as PLA you can drop it by a few degrees just to stop any oozing but you shouldn't really need to change the retraction that much if you do check your temperatures before messing around with the retraction if you drop the temperatures I mean I was running around 196 degrees C or so around there so that's sort of typical my typical PLA printing temperature uh, and this is a mix of PLA and iron particles so it does print just like PLA and that's the one thing that protopasta have managed to do with a lot of their filaments which is really nice that they print just like 
standard PLAs. So you have to do a great deal before you're up and running and you're printing. So let's have a look at some of the things I've printed. One of the first things I did, I had this for many months, as I said, uh, before Christmas, in the depths of winter, I wanted to print a large pot. And the very first thing I printed was this very large pot here. And this is a vase, so it's spiral vase mode. So it's not using a huge amount of material and it's just using one outer perimeter. But the reason why I wanted to test this is because I wanted to fill it with, uh, to experiment with different filling materials. And actually I used concrete in this one or cement, sand and cement mix. And definitely, definitely don't do that. It's not a good idea. It produces a very, very solid part. My intention was to put this outside um, and see how it weathered and produces this wonderful rusting iron effect. But actually what I found out is the concrete and cement or anything like that actually eats away very quickly at the structure of the 3D printed part and it starts to destroy itself. With this one the bottom fell off within about a few minutes of having the material, well a few hours of having the material in there and it wasn't because of the weight because it was all fully supported, it was more the fact that it was just starting to crumble. I then got quite a few cracks and there are some cracks and some things around on this pot and that is purely due to the chemical reactions in the cement material mix that I was using. So definitely recommend not using any types of sand cement mixtures to fill your your pots with because you might want to do that I certainly do um, I did another one as well and uh, this was a smaller one again I filled it with uh, cement before I really had a chance to experiment with other ways of doing it and this one has been coated with a polyurethane varnish sort of lacquer to give it a nice sheen it's still been rusted but it's got a, a lacquer over the top. So before I go on to showing you some of the other things I've printed, I'll show you a little bit about what happens with the, this was the bottom of that large pot that I printed. And you can actually sort of tell, I took this fell off, so it didn't actually get very rusted. And that was this bits of cement inside. And it, it actually just sort of all crumbles away. And it's very, very brittle. So it's really not, not got any strength left and, and this is actually quite a strong filament once it's uh, printed uh, in any other form without putting any of those types of um, uh, fillers in so the concrete cement mix was really not a good idea so I'd strongly recommend not doing that what I did find was this is a really good stuff expanded polyurethane foam for filling it doesn't create the weight but it supports um, the pot a little bit more and it's uh, I used that more on the stainless steel one which we're going to in another video. So the other thing you're probably wondering is how to get the rusting and there are some really good tips on the Protopasta website and other people have used tissue paper soaked in various uh, salts and vinegars. What I did is I used normal some just some water and mixed normal table salt until I get a saturated solution which is basically just slightly warm water or um, uh, pretty much room temperature water. Mix that up until you can't mix any more salt into it. And then I added a little bit of vinegar. <clears throat> so this is just white, uh, white vinegar. And then after that, I actually put in a tiny bit of OxyClean stain remover. And this stuff's interesting. It's basically, uh, let me just read this out, it says, we got um, pr product contains sodium carbonate peroxide. So if there's any chemists out there that have a really good reason why you shouldn't use sodium peroxide, sodium carbonate peroxide, salt and vinegar together, then maybe put that in the comments. But that really worked quite well and produced um, enough, uh, well, a, a bottle of it, which I put into these little spray bottles, which you can spray onto the parts you've printed to get a really nice rusting effect and pretty much everyone recommends that you don't submerge any of these printed parts into the, the, the chemicals because they do tend to absorb a lot and then they'll leach out and cause all sorts of white marks and, and problems so it's better to actually just spray on lightly onto the surface and let that oxidize and spray again and leave in a, a warm environment you'll get more rusting quicker. So I was going to do a time lapse but some of these prints did actually take quite a long time to rust because I did them quite slowly. The newer prints and that's like this one which is 
a really cool skull which has all been rusted nicely. So that was just using a few sprays of the uh, salt vinegar and oxy action and allowing that one just to sit in a fairly cold sort of uh, eight nine degrees C garage uh, to rust over a period of about two or three days. So that was a really nice one to print. A few others I've printed Terracotta Warrior and he's a really nice object to print. I've printed him in all sorts of different materials but he does look particularly good when he's rusted. So that one's a really great one. Some of the others, um, one today Pirates of the Caribbean coin, both sides nicely rusted, that's a really good one. And uh, a few more skulls, we've got a Day of the Dead type skull which has got a lovely rusting effect on there as well. So the other thing with Protopasta is if you use the print straight off the printer you don't really have to touch them because even with a few tiny minor imperfections they're going to rust and hide some of those things anyway. But, but what I did find, especially on the skull, I was using some supports to keep these sections uh, printing well. So this did actually have some supports that I could pull off and the supports worked particularly well but it did leave a slight little hole there. Um, all I found, or what I found a really good way to do is take a section of the of the filament and actually um, just take a small section of your filament and actually light it with a lighter and you get all little pops and crackles because it's like iron filings that you used to play around with at school um, but actually let that melt a little bit blow that one off and uh, blow out the flame and then you can just drip that into any little holes or any imperfections you've got and it worked perfectly on this skull and a few other parts where I had just tiny little holes and it makes a shame it's a shame not to use a part if it's only got a small imperfection there was a little imperfection right at the top there and I just dripped a little bit in there and allowed that just to just to dry so that's a really good way just to fix any print problems you may have but this is so easy to work with, it's so easy to use that you should be able to use it just like normal PLA. Um, the one thing you want to just look out for is uh, if you see any pooling on your hot end. So if you see a little pool of material that starts to sort of increase, it's probably because you've got your flow rate a little bit too high. I noticed this more on the stainless steel one, so I'll go into that into more detail in the next video, but it wasn't so much of a problem with the with the magnetic iron. The other thing is it, it is magnetic and if we've got a little little magnet there it does actually stick really nicely so you can actually use magnets and use this as a magnetic system so you don't always have to rust it but I think a lot of people are going to use the rusting um, as a really nice way to finish off these prints and certainly I had a lot of fun with it over the last few months and I've bought more reels and uh, done all sorts of different things with it as well but here's some of the other things I printed one for Easter which was a really nice little Easter egg which has got little bricks so this is a sort of an old looking brick easter egg that's been rusted and it's only been partially rusted so it's still got a little bit of the black a little bit of the rust and you could polish that up a little bit so you only get the rust inside all the little cracks and things like that so really nice finishes you can have with these um, to actually do the polishing I would certainly recommend just using a scouring pad maybe some stainless steel wool and a little bit of very fine uh, sandpaper you shouldn't really have to do a great deal to prepare the more polishing the, the more sanding you do on an area of, of um, magnetic iron PLA that will rust quicker and uh, create more rust so if you don't want parts to rust then leave them alone if you want to pull out some features just polish them a little bit more sand them rub them do anything just to bring out the the surface a little bit and you'll find that that rusts a lot quicker okay so as, I, as, as I've been saying that uh, I'm going to do a few more uh, videos on protopasta and we'll be looking at the stainless steel uh, PLA next and then after that probably some of their carbon fiber and their high temperature materials which again are really quite nice to use so I've got no real complaints or problems with it the guys at protopasta are absolutely fantastic with their communications they put a lot of things on the website to help you and really once you've tested it you'll see that it is a really good quality product so I'm wholeheartedly recommending you have a good play with it because if there's any material you should spend a bit of money on and just give it an experiment it's definitely magnetic iron PLA because it's so much fun and you can get some wonderful results 
who wouldn't want a really nice, cool, rusted iron skull sitting on their uh, on their windowsill? Um, this is brilliant. Yeah, my only regret is that I didn't print it bigger. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's really really good fun, and it works in all the 3D printers that I've used. It just works just like PLA. So give it a go and uh, let me know how, how you get on. If there's also if there's any other materials that you want to see in this series. They can be protopasta, they can be anyone's at all. I will do my very best to try them out and experiment for you and give you some advice on how to use them. So I hope that was useful. Thanks ever so much for watching. I hope you would want to subscribe if I've done enough to convince you to subscribe to my channel. That's great. I'll put a link to my blog post on this material as well. So there's a lot more details in there about the materials uh, I've used for rusting and the objects that I've printed as well. So thanks ever so much, I'll see you again next time.